Okay, today's gonna be a good one. I got, I got, yo, this dude's podcast is sick. For anybody out there who's not familiar with it, this brother personality is off the chain. Shout to my man, Ugly Money Nietzsche. Nietzsche, welcome to the show, my brother. What's up, brother? Sean Prez, I appreciate you having me, man. It's a, it's a, it's an honor. Nah, man, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, we got a chance to speak offline for the first time a um, so, week or two ago. And truth be told, I love your personality, kid. I love your story. Um, and I knew I just had to get you involved in what we was doing over here. So hopefully this will not be the last time you'll be on this show, brother. Locked in for life, baby. Let's get it. <laughs> okay. You do this podcast thing. You've been doing yeah, how long you been in radio before doing the podcast thing? Well, I was doing, I started in radio back in 2012. I was in uh, Augusta, Georgia on the Clear Channel station. And, uh, you know, I just was moving around in the city. I was making a lot of noise in Augusta. You know, I was in the streets throwing parties and, you know, I was doing some music rapping and, you know, I was making a lot of noise. <clears throat> Our program director, you know, scheduled to meet with me, tells me to come to his office. And, uh, you know, I had a little case of the big head back then. I thought I was the best thing since, you know, sliced bread. So I'm like, yeah, I'm about to be on the radio. And, you know, I walk in this man's office and uh, he makes me drive the van for a year. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was the van driver for the radio station for a full year. And, you know, later on, he told me, he said, you know, I just wanted to see if you was humble enough to, you know, to to drive the van, you know, and, and, and you know, and, and, and he capitalized on your uh on your opportunity when it came. So, you know, I drove that van proudly, you know, and, and learned a lot. And then he finally gave me, a, you know, he finally gave me a break in 2013. And uh, we ended up having a lot of success. I had uh, one of the top rated shows in Augusta. That's dope. That's dope. And you know something like real talk? Because I, you know my background. I come from the music industry. Yeah. And I, I did four internships for free. Worked literally four internships before I even made my way to Bad Boy. Bad Boy was my fifth internship, yep. none of which were paid. And when people ask you, because our mouths, you know, yeah. can say, I want this. Yo, I, I really want to do that. I want this. I want that. But when push come to shove and a nigga throw you at the bottom of the list just to test how <laughs> dedicated you are and how much you really are ready to sacrifice for what your mouth say you actually want. Most people, nah, I can't do it. I need to get paid. I need to start out and be sitting at the head of the table. I came here to be on the air. I didn't come here to be yeah. driving no street team van. Nah. So whenever yeah. I hear stories yeah. <laughs> like that, I love them because those are the stories that need to be told. People see, yeah. you know, personalities and they see, celebrities and they see people who are getting it when they're on top. I wish mm. that more stories like that were, were told and more were shown to the world that whenever you see somebody at the top, nine times out of 10, they grinded double time For sure. at the bottom to get to where they yeah. are today. Yeah, that's a fact. You know, a lot of people, uh, especially in today's climate, uh, they deal with like immediate gratification. It's just like, you know, I want it instantly. And, uh, you know, behind everybody that you feel that blew up overnight was four or five years of struggling, you know, maybe some extra years of just figuring it out. It's just you heard about them overnight. Uh, you know, most of the successful people that I've come in contact with had been there for years. It's just that people just woke up on them whenever their moment came. And so, you know, just, pre you know, pre being prepared and then your moment comes and the fact that you're prepared, you can maximize on the moment when the opportunity comes. And I was always the guy was like, Hey, when they give me a shot, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to seize the moment. I'm going to already be prepared for whenever my opportunity or whatever situation comes, you know. And so, uh, you know, that's that's how I've always been. Like, I'm like, hey, I understand the long haul. I understand the big the bigger picture. And it was like, you know, I don't want to jump over a dollar trying to pick up a penny because it's shiny. Damn, that's and a hard. lot of people do. That is hard, brother. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I just rather I just rather, you know, run the process. And that's what that's what the, the whole ugly money brand embodies. You know, it's the process of success. 
the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, the the lessons and wins. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and that's why I changed. You know, I changed my name to Ugly Money because it was just like, you know, my career has been a roller coaster, and I've had to reinvent myself so many times. Uh, sometimes because I wanted to, sometimes because I didn't. You know, sometimes out of necessity. But uh, everything that I've learned on the way has made me a stronger uh, man, father and businessmen, you know, along the way. So, you know, those, those lessons are those, you know, people think they're losses, but they're really lessons because you can literally monetize your failures. You can teach somebody how not to do something by failing. And so the fact that it may take me five years to get a certain place, I could teach you in five minutes. Well, now I got some value. Now I can in turn, you know, create a whole nother business off of the fact that I can save you five years off some knowledge that took me five, you know, took me five years to make, and I can tell it to you in five minutes. And so that's what, you know, that situation with the radio station, Um, you know, I was looking at bigger picture. I'm like, okay, this is a bigger platform for me to get, you know, my face in, in, you know, and everything recognized. And money is not the only form of payment. I don't understand why a lot of people think that, you know, money is the only thing. Actually, it's, it's really a low form of payment. <laughs> you, know I mean? uh, you know, relationships are worth way more than money because as uh, long as you have a solid relationship, you're always going to be able to make money. And so I always look at I'll always look at things like that, like, hey, I just want to be here. I want to be in this industry because this is what I feel that God put me on this earth to do. And so, um, you know, any anything on my, when I was on my come up, anything that I could do to be in this industry that was in my moral compass, you know, I was, I was there, whether I was paid, you know, whether I was compensated or not, because, you know, after a while, the person that works harder than he's paid is going to be paid more than what he's, what he works. So, you know, hopefully soon <laughs> those roles will switch. Cause uh, I've been the guy that's always worked harder than what he was paid. But uh, that means that you're going to be an asset in everywhere, every room you step in. Every time I walk in the room, if there's not a way that I can bring some value here, then I need to get out that room. Damn. And so, I immediately walk into a place or, or any kind of situation like, OK, how can I be an asset? How can I bring value and how can I make how can I raise the, the bar up in this room? Because if I do that, then now I'm going to I'm certainly always going to be allowed in this room. I'm always going to be welcomed. Uh, they're going to want me in this room. And so uh, a lot of times people try to go in a room and say, what can I take from it? What can I take? What can I learn? What can I get? What can I? I'm the type of person. What can I give? OK, well, and I look at the gap like, oh, OK, there's a gap in the market here. Well, nobody's doing, you know, pod. Nobody's doing like industry podcast in Atlanta. Well, maybe I need to find a way to get in there. And so a lot of the things that I've done in my career is just really me trying to provide value to where value wasn't already there. You know, we are such kindred spirits, and um, I knew I was going to enjoy talking to you, but we we five minutes into the interview, and I'm like, yo, me and this brother, like, we are literally kindred spirits. Everything that you're saying is what I live by, and it's, you know, you get old enough that you understand your legacy is not about what you do for yourself. It's about what you give to others. And everything you're speaking, exactly. just, just that knowledge and the gems that you're dropping, you just gave somebody the blueprint to success, literally. And somebody might 10 years, 20 years from now, be sitting on top of the hill, millions of dollars in their bank and say, yo, you know what? It was that dude Nietzsche. I listened to him. I heard him. <laughs> He don't know me, well, and he don't yes. never know that well, I heard him. Well, cool, man. Yeah. Well, you know the thing about it, bro. You and I tell people all the time: you can work with anybody in the world if you know what they need. If you know what they need, and you can find a way to provide it, that's that's valuable to them. Like, okay, for instance, uh, if if I wanted to work for Diddy. And and most people come in a situation, well, what I want to do for Diddy is I want to be an A&R. Well, he may not need an A&R. He really might need his grass cut. Are you willing to cut his grass, though, for your moment? Are you willing to be his assistant or whatever he actually needs for your situation, you know, for your moment? You know, I always made the joke. I was like, man, I would have walked for the cheesecake. 
you had told me to walk for the cheesecake, I would have brought you back the whole cheesecake factory. There you go. I would have brought you the whole cheesecake store. Like, because at the end of the day, it's an opportunity for me to progress. It's an opportunity for me to excel. Now you can now those those same people that used to joke about that, about walking for cheesecake, work a job that they hate for 40 hours a week. There you go. For 40 years and never and then they retire broke. Retire so broke. you mean to tell me that I a 40 minute walk to possibly set myself up for life, but I'm too proud, so I want to work a job that I hate for 40 hours a week for 40 years of my life. Nah, man, go ahead and give me the walk. Let's get the walking. There you go. Let's go get it. There you go. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Before we switch topics, because you, damn, you hitting on so much. One of the things I hated, and, and, and people really need to listen to what you just said, and please pay attention to what I'm about to say, because you 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 essentially said yo when 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 you're trying to get a job with somebody and you use diddy as an example you got to find out what this man needs right yeah i sure. have had people throughout the course of my career come and say yo i want to work with you i want to work with you <laughs> okay i'll do whatever you need that is the worst <laughs> thing that you could tell me or anybody who is about their business and they're busy. It's the worst answer in the world. I don't have time to figure out how to place you in my organization. You need to figure you that out. You need to sit, humble yourself, yeah. and watch and see yeah. where that white space is. What is this person mm -hmm. lacking? What is his organization lacking? What is her organization lacking? And how can I then bring value to that organization? Because that's when... It's not about them doing something for you. It's about you being able to walk in the room and say, look, I can do something for you. It's not about what, what you can for give sure. me. It's what I can actually yeah. give you. And that's when people who are the exactly. most busiest people on the planet, they is perk up. And, and, and your exactly. conversation sounds so much different than the thousand other people out there that come into their life and say, I'm the hardest worker in the world. I'll do whatever. I'll sweep the floor. I, I, I'll clean the toilets. Well, I got somebody to do that already. Figure yeah. out what, what I don't have. Find the, find the gap. Find what's missing and fill it. A lot, of, a lot of the best jobs are jobs we create ourselves. Yep. You know, when, uh, when, I, when, I, um, I, when I got the A&R position over at Freeman's, uh, I created a job. I saw that, you know, I was doing tours. I was doing like independent artist tours. I was going all over the country, all over the Southeast, doing these independent artist tours. And so I was moving, I was moving one of their artists around. I was moving uh, Future's little cousin Wookie around. And, uh, you know, when, when they called, it was like, hey, you know, we need somebody that's moving around and a guy that's, you know, feet on the ground that's out actually out here in the streets or whatever moving, you know, I created my own job. It wasn't like a situation where I just walked up to them and like, Hey, can I get a position here? It's like, no, I was doing what I was doing. And I saw that, Hey, I, no one else is doing this here. And I know this is beneficial and I know this is valuable. Well, let me incorporate what I can do and I'll just do it. And then sure enough, as soon as the tour is over, I got the call like, and it was like, yo, you know, we want to, you know, we want to bring you on and, uh, you know, and work. And so, you know, it was dope because I never had to ask for the position. You know, I just, I just brought the value. There, there you go. You got to find the white space, man. I mean, find the white space to yes, use your words, find the gap. But, but the bottom line yeah. is yeah. I don't care how big the organization, you could be talking about Apple, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft, it doesn't matter how big the organization is or how small the organization is. There is a yeah, need sure. if you sit back and watch and do your due diligence and do your homework before going to somebody with your hand out. Find what they need and exactly. go in and create your okay. position. But I uh, want to pick your brain. It's a, it's a bunch of things going on and pops it's up. a lot right going on. Bro. And you, you are not. Oh, my God. You're not a dude to mince words. <laughs> you know something? I'm, I'm going to start off. Because I just saw, I just saw, you had, Joe Smith is going through it right now. Former NBA baller, um, number one yeah. draft pick. He going through That's it. That's not right Joe now. Smith. <laughs> His wife created a, 
Oh, he... <laughs> but, but you had his wife on your podcast. First and foremost, how did that happen? And secondly, I, I need to get your thoughts on that whole situation. Oh, man. All right. Well, um, I saw her on my one of my one of my partner's podcasts, and I was like, yo, they're in Atlanta? So I immediately called my partner, like, yo, how the heck did you? You know, I had to ask the same question, like, how did you get on her? He's like, oh, I've known her for years. She lives up the street. And then I get to call, I get to talking to her, and she was like, oh, yeah, my daughter loves your show. She's always posting your content. I was like, oh, your daughter's seen my show. And you, you're not scared <laughs> to come on? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh it, it, it was kind of it was kind of dope they were actually you know they actually live in the atlanta area and uh you know i we just you know i reached out to her she came through and uh i told her i said i purposely told her i said i promise you you will have a safe place to tell your story and uh the whole time i was interviewing her uh, the chat guys were just calling for blood it was like push the button on anichi push the button on her I like, there's a difference. This is an interview. That show is a debate show. You're talking about my debate show. Now, if she was to bring herself on my trigger alert debate show, I would push that button and drop a bomb in a second. But I said, this is an interview. I want to give this woman a chance and opportunity to, uh, to you know, just express her opinion. No matter if I agree or disagree or how I feel personally, you know, I believe that an interviewer should, you know, try to be as impartial as, as possible. You know, that's just real journalism. So I did my research. You know, I tried to ask the tough, hard questions because I definitely didn't hold my tongue when it came to the questions. You know what I'm saying? I asked the, the crazy stuff and uh, and she answered it. She answered it, you know, as, as honest and transparent as she could. But, um, man, shouts out to Joe, man. It's a that's a, okay. So, so I gotta ask you, what 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 is a question that you asked her that you were surprised that she asked? Can you turn a hoe to a housewife? Don't Act it up. Damn. Can you turn a hoe to a housewife? Okay. So, 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 what what, what was her response? To she that? deflected like hell. <laughs> well, you know, you gotta understand. Okay, like accountability is something that you know a lot of women is kind of kryptonite for certain women, and so. You know, they're not going to want to take any kind of accountability. So, you know, when I'm being petty or whatever, I'm going to purposely put some account. Like, here's some accountability for you. See what you do with it. And, of course, they're going to shun it away and things of that nature. So, you know, I asked her, you know, as a whole to be a housewife. And she gave an answer that didn't make any, barely any sense. But, you know, <laughs> it, it was an answer. And, uh, you know, she deflected, you know, and she was like, well, it's not about being a hoe. And not, well, no, but, ma'am, it, it's about being a hoe because that's exactly what I asked you about. But, uh. <laughs> Hey, this is your interview, and you can do exactly how you want. But I definitely ask you: is a whole being a housewife, you know? And so, um, you know, I think about the whole situation. It's just like, yo, they they both got it. one. She was totally wrong for going public. Totally wrong. There is no, there is no, there is no deflection from that. There is no excuse for publicly outing your personal business. The only reason that we can even talk about this right now is because these people publicly put it out there you know what i'm saying and i told her that i was like you know the public thing now is she wrong for going to get her bag i mean would i would i want my woman doing that of course not of course not oh i was about to be of course no, no, of what? course not i wouldn't want my woman having the only fans but this is the thing you kind of started something and now you got to finish it joe you knew what she was before you can easily go online and type in her porn name and see tons of videos. And when I say tons, I'm talking full blown out porn, bro. Every type of, all of it. You know what I'm saying? So you knew what you had, bro. And so it's just like, at the end of the day, if you know you got one of them, I don't want to call his wife what I wanted to call his wife, but if you know that you have a woman that is a sexual worker a sex worker as soon as times get hard and as soon as she is not comfortable she's going right back to sex work that's what she knows it's her it's her it's her trade if you've been ladies if you've been dating a hustler all your life and he's been selling dope since the 90s and times get hard and that car washing he open ain't car washing and and the laundry man ain't laundry man what do you think he's about to go do you think he's about to go to walmart no, he's probably gonna go get him a book. 
He is going to go get him a brick because he knows that's a quick way to make some quick cash because he's a master at it. So you kind of know what you're getting. Joe knew what he was getting, bro. You know what I'm saying? So in that case, you know, I feel that Joe owns himself a little accountability because of the fact of the matter is, bro, not only did you bring it in the house, it's not, it's no problem with having fun with it, but bro, you kept it. And then you put a ring on it. You married. And then you watched it. You put a and ring on that. Put it, put it in the house. And then you stayed with it for 14 years. Well, bro, you invited that type of energy. You, you invited that. That's what you wanted. You wanted a freak jet every night of the night. Okay, cool. Me personally, I would have had fun with her sit on her way every night. Yeah, damn it. But you wanted to move her in, put the ring on it. I don't know if he got a the way she popping it, I don't think they got a prenup. So who Shouts out to Joe. Okay, so did, did she give you, because to me, you're absolutely right. Joe got to bear some of the responsibility. For sure. He knew what he meant. <laughs> he knew she she never kept a secret who you she was and what she was about. The, yeah, got it. it. Got it. But the fact that, I mean, these are, these are not kids. Like, like the fact that she went to videotape, it's one thing to even go public with it and put it online. But your first thought is to videotape. That caught me off guard because these are people who are pushing 50 years old, both of them. Then on top of this, you do put it online, to your point. But I, I, I got to ask, are they having, or did she give you the the indication that they're having that type of financial problems that she would need to go and do something like yeah that? yeah they, 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 their finances are a, a wreck as as from uh from what she's what she said to me um you know like but you you realize joe made something 61 like 63 million, million dollars made 61 NBA? million dollars but you know going through a divorce uh taxes you know yeah, man, you take a guy from the hood and never had nothing man you give him 61 million dollars what you what you what you think you're gonna do with it he gonna find a way to mess it up, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, if I mean, gives, look, look, hey, even if you if nobody up, gives him any game, if nobody is if nobody's genuine around him, yeah, man, everybody's gonna siphon it out of him. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, yo, niche, niche, come on, man, nah, <laughs> like, like, like you, you can mess up. You make sixty one yeah. million dollars. Let's say you you mess up thirty of <laughs> at some point. Yeah. <laughs> like, like when, when I look at my bank account and I'm thirty million dollars short, we gotta hold Joe at some point I gotta say, look, we gotta hold Joe accountable at some time. Like, bro, you had sixty one M's, bro, and you, and you, like, like how many, how many of them M's are you gonna mess up before you wake up and say, I got five left. I better do everything in my power to make this five stretch and last me for the rest of my days. When, when I hear stories like this, that a man has lost $61 million in his lifetime, this man is 48 yeah. years old. Come on, brother. You telling me at no point did you go back to school? Did you say, yo, I didn't have bad accountants. I had bad tax management people. I, let me get the right people because I need the rest of If I got two million left, I need this to stretch. This is crazy when I hear stories. Yeah, like man, it's, it's it's unfortunate, man. So you know, I believe like I mean, some of a lot of it's ignorance, but a lot of it is just the fact that matters of the people that are around them. You gotta understand that you know when you get that kind of bread that everybody around you isn't genuine. You know what I'm saying? And and if you allow, Nietzsche, I, I can't let them off the hook with not, that. I'm I not. Allow... Maybe may, may, maybe maybe you lose thirty million dollars. Yeah. But at some point, you got to wake no, up and say, I need to change he the back. He fumbled the back, totally. He fumbled the back. He fumbled the ball. And so, oh, my but, God. But the, that, goes, that goes back to his decision-making. Obviously, he, he hasn't made a lot of smart decisions in his life. Okay, you lose $61 million. You go through a divorce one time in the year. And then the first thing you do after you get a divorce is, I'm going to go marry a porn star. Bro, your decision-making... <laughs> Man, it's <laughs> not only am I going to marry a porn star, I'm going to not make her sign a prenup or NDA so she can out me at any point in time. Bro, you're not making a... You're thinking with the wrong head, my boy. You know, I understand. I, 
I, you know, I ain't looked at the videos, but I heard about her videos. And I understand she could probably do some amazing things, my boy. But there's a ton of women out here that can do those same things, bro. You don't got to put the ring on it and take it to the house and wife it. And, and, and you know, you didn't have to do that. But like I say, you know, he, he may have, he made some bad decisions. And now he has to live with the bed. You know, he has to sleep in the bed that he's made for himself. Hey, bro, you asked her to marry you. Here's a random question. How 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 homegirl look now? Uh, she looks good for fifty. She looks decent for fifty. I mean, I'm not going to subscribe to it. But she, but does she look all the fifty, or does she look like fifty with a bunch of miles on it? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not. She looks good for her age. I will give her that. She looks good for her age. Okay. Uh, am I going to pay whatever it is? No, I'm not going to pay for the for the OnlyFans link. But uh, but she looks good for her age. She looks good for her age. You know, before we switch topics, like real talk, you know, I, I don't really understand this whole OnlyFans <laughs> thing. It is what it is. But, you know, if if she was if she was truly out there doing this for the money, I watched the video just yeah. like you watched it. That dude, Joe, was caught off guard. Joe was like, yo, I didn't know you had an OnlyFans. So... It's one thing that she's out there doing what she knows yeah. to do, what she does best. But nigga, can you bring the money home? Like you know, we got financial and so problems. So this is the thing I talk to. Her. You get yeah. money and you not sharing. Yo, the thing, the thing that uh, she said, she said uh, she was at the when she first started, she was at the twenty top twenty two percent of all OnlyFans models. Now she's in the top point four percent. She's in like one of the top models on OnlyFans now. Well, okay, I'm, I'm so confused. What is a 50 year old woman doing that puts her in the top 0.4 percent? Like I'm, I'm so confused. Going viral, man. You know, people are talking about it. People want to see what that old cat do. <laughs> <laughs> they want to see what that. Oh man, they want, they they curious, man. You know, they curious. Like man, I wonder what this. What the old cat gonna do? You know what I'm saying? They got gray hairs on the cat. I don't know. You know, people just try to find out what the old cat do. I mean, you, you know, you like what you like, my boy. <laughs> and it's me. Oh my somebody, god! Somebody, like, somebody watching it. That obviously she in the top point four percent at fifty years at 50. old. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Jeez. All right, uh, switch topics with me. Speaking of old cat with with gray hair, I mean, listen, yeah, I mean, you can't even make this stuff up. Uh, <laughs> well, I came, I, I'm sad to say, sad. To say. Oh my god! Speaking of old cat with gray hair, let let let's take this thing to Vegas. Your man Keefe D. Oh, wow. You know. This man, and I really need to get your thoughts yeah, on this. Yeah. Keefe D got arrested, you know, being in the car. They're saying that he was the one who handed the shooter the gun that killed Tupac. This man has literally been on a publicity tour telling anybody who will listen, it was me. I'm willing to give y'all every detail on planet Earth, what happened on the night that Tupac was murdered? And he got arrested and seemed surprised. What the, like, what is your thoughts on this? Keeva D is a perfect example of when clout chasing goes wrong. When, Without a when question. clout chasing goes wrong. You know, there's, there's, there's one drug out here that is worse than crack, more addictive than heroin, Molly, Percocets, and everything. It's clout. It's attention. People fiend for that like it it was an opioid. You dig what I'm saying? And so when people that haven't ever had that fame or that intention or that notoriety get it, it hits them like a drug. You know what I'm saying? And, and people sh you know, yearn for it. Keefe D went on a tour to tell on himself. Literally. To attempt to sell books. Um... They, 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 there's, there was a show called The Dumbest Criminals. Uh, he's definitely one of them. He's got to be there, you know. And I hate to say it, 
Oh he's one of the God. dumbest criminals in the world. And the fact of the matter is that you openly, like this was your calling card. Hey, come interview me because I'm going to tell you that I murdered Tupac. Dummy. <laughs> So I mean, at the end of the day, we can't we can't sit here and 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 feel you know sad that this guy got what he was asking for. You were going around on a whole publicity tour, and I also want to say this as a journalist, as myself as well. It is not the journalist's fault that this nigga want to come on the platform and tell on himself. It is not our fault. Absolutely. It's not our fault. Absolutely not. If you come on this platform and you incriminate yourself and say some stupid shit that's going to get you locked up, that's not our fault. It's not us. I'm not your daddy. I wasn't with I ain't shoot the gun. No, bro. We push, we push record on the camera, ask you a question, and your ass told on yourself. Now, Sean Paz can ask me a question. Hey, Nietzsche, what were you doing September 11, 2001? I'm not going to say I burned down the Twin Towers. <laughs> I did. So why the hell would Keefe D just go on this long tirade years and years, platform after platform, of telling on himself and thinking that it wasn't eventually going to catch up with him when cloud chasing goes wrong? He going to get whatever he asked for. He going to get exactly what he asked for. He got it now. You know... It, it, it's the it's the most mind boggling, insane. Uh, this is one of them things. Like, look, what's that old saying? Uh, 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 a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. <laughs> to all the young, <laughs> to all them young thug life street dudes out there, please. This dude should be at the top of your list. Like, real talk. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you something, Nietzsche. It, we we live in an era. I I would love to say that he is an exception to yeah. the rule. I would love to say that Keefe D, um, you know, he is one in a million. <laughs> the Fed's life, like like literally, being a federal agent right now, being in law enforcement is easier than ever. <laughs> they literally sit. With a box of donuts, uh, and, and 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 coffee, and scroll all day, <laughs> they are following every criminal that they are looking into, and they just wait for you to get on the gram and go live and snitch on right. yourself, and then they show up at your door and you wondering how this happened, cause you told them. Wow, bro, that cl- <laughs> that drug. I- I don't get it, bro. It's the, it's the sickest drug. It's the most addictive drug in the world today. Clout. They love it. But can, can but can you believe, like you, as a grown man, can you believe so many of these so-called street niggas is, is telling everything and, and they live streaming everything for the world to see? Can you believe this is the world we live in? Like, like you know, I'm going to tell you why I believe it. Because I've seen what clout does to people. Clout's the reason why Joe Smith is on on all these things. So people were searching for clout. Clout's the reason why you know we we know Krishan Rock and Blueface, or you know we know who Krishan Rock is. Clout is the reason why half of these things that are in media happen is because people are in search of clout. And then you got to also understand one thing: when you get that attention, and you may not be accustomed to that level of attention, but when you get it, you gotta you gotta also be ready for whatever comes with it, because with attention comes hate. With the notoriety comes enemies. And you know, with as, as many people that want to, that are cheering you on, as many people that want to bring you down. And so you got to be very careful with that or whatever. And you know, it's just, it's a drug, man. And and I've seen people crash out for it. I've seen people cross their homeboys out for clout. I've seen people leave their families for clout. I've seen people, you know, stab their own, you know, daughters and family in, in their backs for clout. They homeboys. They they they, they, they sandbox homeboys, stab them in the back. For the clout. And so, um, you know, it's just it's just a case of people that if you've never been that guy and you finally get your little chance to have your 15 seconds of fame and you do too much. Well, you, you, you got what you deserve, man. Dumbest criminals of the year. For sure. Keefe D. Keefe D. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. He, he's going on trial. 
he's going to try he's to the year. He's donkey of the year for sure uh, to me. Oh, he, he's donkey of the century. I donkey of the day. Donkey of the year. Yeah, donkey of the century. There you go. I mean, his trial is starting um, June 3rd, 2024. How do you think that thing's going to play out? They're going to lock his black ass up under the jail. Up under there. But this is the thing that, that, that is scary. Because you know, at least I don't think, that he's going to keep his mouth shut. He hasn't kept his mouth shut his whole fucking life. So he's not going to keep his mouth shut. So you think that he didn't went on these podcasts and told on himself and he ain't going to tell on other people? Oh, That's the real. names he about to drop, that is going to be crazy. And um, I think that they better keep a lot of protection around them because the things that he knows and the names that he may say is uh, it's probably some things that people ain't going to want to get out. And they'll probably pay a pretty penny to make sure that he stays quiet. So, you know, Keefe. Nah, I Keefe, couldn't agree with you Keefe, more. I, yeah, Keefe dug a big hole for himself. You know, he dug a big hole for himself. And like I said, how can we, if this man didn't keep quiet about himself and his own personal things, then why the hell do you think he's going to keep quiet about somebody else to not save his ass? Man, that man probably going to sing like a bird, but he going to sing like a bird, man. He gonna have I mean, sixty year old men going to jail and people's you know feds showing up to these folk houses and pulling them out of mansions and you know it's just gonna be an unfortunate situation where we have to see more black brothers going to jail and you know we thinking this you know we might have did some dirt in high school we think we behind this here come this nigga gonna tell our dirt from high school like nigga what is <laughs> man why we. Oh, we sold that dope in the 80s, bro. Why is you talking about it? Y'all got some goddamn dope from the 80s. Bro, I ain't, I ain't seen dope in 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Here <laughs> <laughs> this guy go, they pulling me. They gonna pull, pull his own boy out of his goddamn, you know, house with his, you know, his two dogs and his picket fence because Keefe D wanted to go on podcast tour telling on himself. Yeah, nah, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, this man, I, 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 I a million percent believe right now as we speak, he's somewhere, <laughs> seriously, like he's somewhere in a meeting with his attorney and with the feds going over better keep everything army around him. he can think of. They um, better keep that uh, army around him, bro. They better keep an army around him because there's going to be a lot of people that want him to sh- Shut up. No and question. Keefe, Keefe don't like to shut up. So they better keep... They Keefe better don't keep. like to shut up. And, and you know, you, you touched on this, but this is a 60-year-old man. Six, zero. It's hard to teach this an old man, dog. They, he don't have no 15, 25 years in him. This man ain't looking to go to jail for, for no time. So if he can tell everything he know on everybody he know, he gonna do that so he can go home. Yeah, exactly. Like I say, if a man gonna tell on himself, why wouldn't he tell on you? Why wouldn't he tell on me? Shoot, man, I, I didn't save my own ass. Why would I save his? Damn, no, nah, man. Keep it. D gonna try to goddamn tell it and and then write a book about it. Yeah, how I got half the industry locked up. And he's gonna be <laughs> back on the podcast. You know what I'm saying? He gonna be back on the podcast trying to get twenty five hundred to tell everybody how he got these niggas locked up. <laughs> Keep me looking at this like this is an opportunity. I'm about to eat. All right. Oh, uh, switch right. topics. I'm, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take it down to Atlanta for a second. Yo, What's backyard. Yes, sir. Yo, yo, I mean, internet been going crazy. Your man Dwight Howard. He just got <laughs> nailed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo. I mean, again, you can't make this stuff up. The White Howard just got named in a civil lawsuit. Yeah. Uh, it alleges that he sexually assaulted a man in his Georgia home in July 2021. Hmm. From what the man says, he met the White, slid in his DMs. The White invited him to come on over. <laughs> 
dude thought that he was going to be <laughs> having a rendezvous with, with, with Dwight Howard. <laughs> and in walks a big old brawny transsexual <laughs> and was about to blow his back out. <laughs> I don't even know. Listen, I, I don't even know where to go. Get, you tell me your thoughts on this. Dwight tried to run a train on a man, man. That's a train, ladies and gentlemen. I, I don't know how far y'all go back, but it's this thing we used to call call trains. You know what I'm saying? There was a whole bunch of guys get on one girl, used to be back in the day, and they, you know, they per- partake in, in, in whatever kind of favors they were going to do. Dwight Howard was trying to run a train on a man. Now, listen, is he wrong for that, uh, for having his sexual preference? Dwight, if you like what you like, brother, hey, be you. You know, I just want him to be unapologetic. Bro, just come on out. Hey, if you into that, just say it. You know, and especially in today's climate, they'll love you for it. You probably, you know. probably your, your, your profile will probably rise if you just came out and say, "Hey, you know, I'm that or whatever." But you know, when, when you when you hide it and you and you hush hush and stuff like that, bro, just live your truth, man. If that's what you like, you like, man. If you want, if you want to do chase, do chase, bro. If you like booty, like booty, bro. Cool. Hey, do I have a like booty? Superman like booty. Cool. But listen, right, <laughs> you can't like booty and then inadvertently bring another person that like booty to this booty that only like you. <laughs> but that's right, bro. You gonna you about to he ain't consent to two. He you know what I'm saying? Like when I was interviewing Joe Smith while she was talking about this thing called DP. She's talking about double penetration. Brought in the consent to the DP dog. He just wanted he just wanted you, Dwight. He just wanted Superman. You know what I'm saying? He wanted the one on one. He was playing one on one. Boy, you brought the whole team, bro. You can't do that. You can't do that. So, you know, I just, you know, I salute to Dwight Howard for, you know, I guess he's trying to live in his truth a little bit because he ain't confirmed or denying. He was just like, you know, what I do in my bedroom is between me and the person in my bedroom. Well, you didn't let the person know that was in your bedroom what the hell you had going on. Cause it got damn hit from it, boy. Walking in the bathroom, come on, her name kid named Kitty. Motherfucker, goddamn big ass nigga walking this motherfucker name Kitty, talking about what's like, bro, like. Dwight, bro. You gotta let these folks know what you got going on, Dwight. You can't, you can't be doing it. You can't be blindsiding people, bro. You can't be hiding dicks in the closet, Dwight. Salute, man. You still one of my favorite players, dog. I still got love and respect for you. I love, but you know, you can't, you can't, yeah, bro, you can't sit there. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, it, you can't just bring a, a nigga, a, a, a nigga in a dress out the closet, got um, <laughs> hiding in the closet. You can see. I mean, <laughs> I can see. Hell no. Nah, oh, that boy a victim now. Now that other boy, he a victim. What well, they about to do some crazy to that boy? What well, they about to tell that ass? Nah, boy. The white do what you do, man. But uh, you gotta let these folk know, man. You gotta get consent, man. It's gotta be consensual, sir. But live your truth, bro. The white, hey, man. If that's how you rock, hey, be proud of it, man. Be proud of it. Live it. You know what I'm saying? Stand ten toes on it, and ain't nobody gonna shun you for that, man. Shoot, do what you do, Superman. Fly high, baby. <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. Oh. Uh... I don't know if you remember Jason Collins. He was like the, the the first openly gay male athlete that came out. I do remember yeah, he him. He was applauded for it. Yeah, for sure. He was applauded. Bro, Little Nas X career was over. It was over until that boy came out. When that boy came out, up. You know what I'm saying? Now, I mean, she don't even got to drop records. He could just, we, we, he wore, he wear a damn Halloween costume and get endorsement deals and he could probably stream for the rest of his life. Yeah, man. Like, hey, bro, live your truth, bro. Like, I'm just saying, bro, y'all don't, into the, in 2023, you ain't even got to hide it. Like, people applaud it, bro. People applaud it. People, people will look at you, especially with his persona. This is a man that's damn near seven feet tall. Six foot eleven, some crazy. The white got the white, you know, and I, the white. I'm not hitting on you. That's like, a big, so like, that's a big boy. <laughs> that's a big boy. Like that boy got he got his body is is a a, a freaking it's magnificent. Like, oh, I, zero body fat. 
Oh, oh, hold on. I'm not hitting on you, Dwight. I'm not hitting on you. <laughs> Dwight is a male hey. specimen. Hey, that's what, that's what the rest of them boys. That's what the rest of them boys said about him too. He's like, he's a magnificent. No, no. Huh. you know, no. you know, this is a man that got zero percent body fat. He probably could get any man in that lifestyle that he wants. Yeah, yeah. But, but to to our earlier point, being a successful uh, world championship NBA baller. Yeah. And to come out and live your truth, it would take you to a whole other level. But just to give a random statement, what I do in my bedroom ain't nobody's business but mine. Come on, man. Hello, do I? <laughs> Can, I, I mean, me. you got to lean on one side of the fence. Either I did it or I didn't do it. Kobe Either this man him, is completely lying on me. There was no dude who came out that was my height. With, with a wig on and, and, and he was he was he was trapped in the closet until I let him out. Sean, come on, Kobe, man. Kobe Bryant tried to tell us, man. He said that boy was soft. Kobe Bryant oh, told that, us, man. He said that boy was soft. When well, that boy came from Orlando to, to L.A. the first time, he said, man, he made soft. He tried man, to he, tell us. I forgot all about that. Kobe did got all about this. Because, <laughs> you know, Kobe had, Kobe had them things. You know what I mean? Kobe God. had them things. You know, Kobe had them, them gray skins coming in and out the locker room. Hold on. <laughs> he said that boy was soft back, back in the early 2000s. <laughs> you need to understand what Kobe was talking about. He's like, man, that man soft. That man, <laughs> Kobe was a G, nigga. <laughs> Hey man, goddamn, there ain't nothing wrong with it. Hey, bro, do beat do you. But well, yeah, man, you gotta let these folks know you got a nigga in the closet, though, boy. Nah, you can't have a dude trapped in the closet. <laughs> ain't no way. <laughs> ain't no way in the world. You 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 got the lights dim, you got the music up, and, and <laughs> all of a sudden. Seven foot nigga <laughs> named <laughs> My name. <laughs> and and to Ooh. add insult to injury, because whoever this dude was, this dude must have been scared out of his mind. This dude got out of there and pressed charges. He was like, yo, it ain't bad enough that I'm just trying to get out of here, but I was sexually assaulted. Who wouldn't be scared of a big black nigga walking out of a closet? <laughs> you got to do something. If I'm with a chick, bro, and a nigga put my, bro, I'm shooting that. I'm, I'm getting the hell on too. What the fuck y'all got going? What the hell? So you, I don't know what the white thought that was gonna be cool. This monstrosity of a man named Kitty walking his goddamn big ass you know, over to the bedroom. He about to. My name Kitty. No. <laughs> <laughs> Better get your ass on. You don't know what these big niggas is on, bro. These two big goddamn basketball players. Nah, man, get the hell on. Nah, come That's on. That's after that man. guy that left. They Just was about to tear that man booty hole to pieces, man. Good Lord. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, man. what this is. Oh, yo, let, let, let's keep this thing in the NBA. Matter of fact, <laughs> yeah, I guess we could, I could say keep it in the NBA. Um, because his pops was in the NBA. Marcus Jordan. Dayton lost a Pippen. That that name Pippen. Don't get me triggered. It's synonymous with Jordan. Yeah. And now it's synonymous with Jordan for all the wrong reasons. You know, them two is now on a publicity tour. Marcus Jordan said, yo, when we get married. I want my father to be the best man. I was the best man at his wedding, and he going to be the best man at mine. Is this disrespectful? Or is it, yo, you know what? That's my pops. I want him to be my best man. He my best friend. I was the best man at his wedding. Why not? Or should we be looking at this like, yo, this is as disrespectful as you can get. 
Uh, Larsa Pippen is embodies everything that's wrong with these women these days. There's two billion dicks you could have chose from, baby. <laughs> two billion dicks that you could have chose from, and you go get your ex husband's baby boy, a nigga that you probably saw in Pampers. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, my my guess is she probably wanted Mike, but Mike ain't want that cat back then. She probably was <laughs> Mike back then, but Mike ain't had time for it. And so, you know, she just waited her turn. And, and you know, and, and, and so I want to flip it. Had it been another way, had it been a man waiting on a little girl to come of age so he can have sex with her. You feel what I'm saying? That he would be the, he would be the terror. He would be a predator. He would, R. Kelly. Okay, let's Ain't call no. her what it is. She are what it is. Lots of Pippin and R. Kelly. You feel what I'm saying? She wait. She waited for this boy to become a man and won't take advantage of him. Unfortunately, Marcus ain't have enough game. Ain't nobody put him on game about how to deal with these goddamn women. And so you know, she got two billion dicks she could have choose from, and she gonna go go date a goddamn ex husband, her, her little nephew. You know what I'm saying? It just goes to show, like you know, what I mean, like because if a man had did that. We would, you know, it'd be in the news that he'd be a predator. He's a rapist. He's a weirdo. He's a suck sicko and everything like that. And it, it, it's just sad that women get a pass when, in actuality, it is just as sick. It is no just question. as sick what our Kelly did. No it question. is just as sick. You feel what I'm saying? She just waited her turn. She just waited her turn, brother. If our Kelly would have waited four or five years, he would have been in the same predicament as, as Larson. She just waited. R. Kelly just went in. <laughs> when just, they, they coming over. They coming over for family events and stuff or whatever. And they, the kids out there playing basketball and shit. She over there looking at this little boy. Just so she can. I'm going to tell you what she did, though. She probably blew in the booty or something. Did, get some, did some shit he ain't never had. She probably did some freaky shit to his ass, bro. <laughs> Marcus ain't never, you know what I'm saying? See, I, I'm going to tell you all Marcus got to do. Bro, go to the south side of any city and find a big booty chick named Keisha, and she gonna set him straight. He need to get some real, a real woman, a real chick from the, cause you could tell he wet behind the ears, man. Shotty took advantage of that boy. That boy that had a silver spoon in his mouth, he ain't been around no real shit, no real niggas, and no real women. You feel what I'm saying? So this girl come over here with this goddamn LA lifestyle with that old ass cat. Don't, don't know all the tricks. You probably been throwing that slang. You know, future been fucking her with the Gucci flip flops for forever. But she done smoked out half the industry. This bitch knows some shit. And then she gonna do this shit to that little boy? And he ain't never had no real piece of cat? Yeah, of course she gonna blow his mind. He over here cuffing. He gonna be in the next future song. I already know Pluto going to, he gearing up. He gearing up for it. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah, like, come on, man. And so, you know, it's just, it's just unfortunate because it's like, you know, that man has the rest of his life ahead of him, bro. You, bro, go, go, go live, bro. You, it's so much other women and beautiful women and peaceful women and, and successful women that you could deal, bro. You're Michael Jordan. So you are the heir to the throne, my boy. You know what I'm saying? You go, like, bro, you go literally in your backyard. You go fuck unk wife. You go fuck unk wife. You go fuck future side bitch. Why? Bro, I know plenty of goddamn beautiful girls that's, that's way younger, submissive, beautiful, that ain't got half the industry bodies that Shawty got and didn't play basketball with your daddy. So, you know, uh, I believe she the predator, man. She 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 preyed on that boy's, uh, you know, she preyed on that boy's innocence, and she preyed on that boy's, uh, you know, just just lack of game. He 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 ain't Mike, Mike ain't give him no game, man. Mike just get that boy whatever he want. He been able to he he done had a silver spoon in his mouth. He got whatever he wanted as a kid, and you know what I'm saying he was just you know he probably you know just intrigued with goddamn Uncle Scotty wife when he was a kid and soon as he got up big enough, yeah, you could have smashed the dog, but go marry him? That's and you think story. Mike might have said, nah, bro, man, because we gonna, cause real niggas going to, real niggas would never, Mike ain't about to come to that wedding, bro, we going to stop buying Jordans. We'll stop buying Jordans, man. I see Mike goddamn uh, co-sign that bullshit. I'm mad. I don't want to buy no Jordans no more. 
Real niggas ain't about to stand for that, bro. Uh-uh, nah, man. I'm going to fuck around. Make me buy some Adidas or some shit, man. No. Mike, you better not. You need to tell that nigga to goddamn chill out. All Mike need to do is sit back, chill, be Michael Jordan, and shut the fuck up. And so let us buy the same pair of shoes that we had in fifth grade. Over and over. Grade. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to tell you something, Nietzsche, and this is real talk. I just looked it up when you was talking. He 32 years old. She 49. All things considered, this dude is a this is a grown ass man right here. Yeah, for this sure. Dude, this dude is a grown man. And you started off by saying, out of the two billion dicks out there, she chose him. That ain't no accident. But what is mind boggling to me is, my brother, your last name is Jordan. Yeah, like, like understand the intrinsic value. That you have just in your birthright. You are the heir to the throne. You are the oldest. You are Marcus Jordan. And out of the two billion women out there who would love for you to choose them. You choose this 49 year old woman who to your point was future side chick. She was sleeping with Beasley, who later played ball with her son. This is the woman that you want to put a ring on? I'm so, like Auntie Larsa. That's what she is. She auntie. He fucking his auntie, bro. He fucking his auntie. That's her nephew. But she, but she, I can understand, right? And I get it. That's Auntie Larsa. I can understand if Auntie Lawson was, yo, truth be told, when she was with Scotty, she was every bit of a wife. I ain't never heard nothing about her. I ain't never heard that she was out there sleeping with other NBA ballers. I never heard nothing. She said that she was giving the box to, to Scotty four times a day. Yeah. She clearly had nothing else to do in her life but be the perfect wife. But after they divorced, all you heard was her. The whole came out. Everything she missed in her 20s, she made up for it in her 40s. And this is who and you once choose. Again, white. I'm so, come on. And once again, we've been saying it all, 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 all interview. When you bring that type of energy into the house, once, once they're not comfortable, they're going to go back to what they know. She was old when she married, probably married Scotty, bro. But you know what? He had her up there, posted up. All she had to do was do whole shit for him. Hey, well, I can just be a hoe for you and fuck you four times a, a day because I really want to be a hoe, but you making it very comfortable for me in this big ass house and my kids is good. So I just hoe for you. But as soon as me and you split, guess what she about to go right back and do, bro? She's it's in her nature. She's going to back and she's gonna go back and hoe. And that's exactly what she did. She is a high value O. High value. I mean, you just hit the nail on the head. You just hit the nail on the head. Auntie Lars. The only thing different from her is she's high value. She, she's on the housewives, and she has been rich for the better part of her life because she got married to Scotty when I think she was 23, got with him when she was 21. Yep. <laughs> Her talents ah. are she's suck a dick. <laughs> <laughs> like Auntie Larsa, though. That's Auntie Larsa. I mean, you, but here's the deal, and this is as real as I could put it. I know we've been we've been um joking. <laughs> I, I'm all for you know find living your truth and, and, and finding that person that you're compatible with. If this is the person for him, and he can look past her past. And he can look past, because right now, if it was Sean, I'd be scared to death, man. It ain't no accident that you only just happened to mess with high-value dudes. You knew who the hell I was. You, you, you knew who the hell I was. You know my last name. You know my father is, is a billionaire three times over. I, I don't think it's no accident that she chose him. Real talk. But I digress. If they're happy... It is what it is. All right. Um, speaking of problematic wives, 
Oh shit. <laughs> I, I mean, Jada Pinkett Smith. Jada Pinkett Smith <laughs> recently dropped her New York Times bestseller, Worthy. And Jada Pinkett Smith did what Jada Pinkett Smith does best, which is totally run that bus over Will Smith in every way possible and did it in the name of selling books. What is your take on that relationship? Because Will came out and said, I support her, and this is the happiest week of my life. Jada Pinkett Smith is the Michael Jordan of dysfunctional black women. She is, the, she is the Michael Jordan of dysfunctional black women. She is the LeBron James of toxic black women. She has demasculized this man in every shape, form, or fashion, and now doing a media run, making more mockery of the fact. Did you know that Jada Pinkett and Will weren't even together they were separated that night that he went and slapped chris rock for her and it's well, so it's so yeah, yeah they were actually separated they've been separated for six or seven years and that night they actually kind of rekindled their thing so you mean to tell me that a man is going to risk his whole career uh uh risk his whole career and that is is amusing to you to the point of now you want to deal back with your husband um after you have publicly just humiliated him, demasculized him, and you fucking your nephews too, you fucking predator. Because the only difference between Jada and R. Kelly is the fact that R. Kelly didn't wait his turn. He didn't wait five years. Jada waited. You all, y'all all messing with your kids' friends, which is despicable and disgusting. And had a man did it, had it been Will, you know what I'm saying? Dick and Dale, one of Willow's friends. It had been all over the blogs that he a predator and it's a scandal and everything. But when Jada do it, it's cute. When Jada do it, it's, oh, Jada and August, I've seen her here. And then the nigga didn't even keep it G, Sean. He didn't even keep it G. She over there fucking the nigga and the nigga didn't even keep his mouth shut. He dropped the whole album and the bitch went plastic. So this man, you mean, baby, you mean to tell me you over here with one of the most powerful black men in the world you gonna go fuck your son's homeboy and don't even got and don't even got enough game with this young nigga to get him to shut up so he gonna drop an album and then he turn out he got a little boyfriend too <laughs> so you have totally humiliated this powerful black man in front of everybody for a nigga that like the same shit you like and then bring Will to the red table so we can talk about it that's why they canceled that motherfucking show, man. God damn it. I, I, I'm, I'm happy for it. Uh, yeah, well, Jada Pinkett is the Michael Jordan of dysfunctional black women. Uh, she makes it a almost laughable to, to humiliate Will, to disrespect him publicly, uh, crying over another man that's been, you know, passed away, RP Tupac, but crying over another nigga that's been gone for two, 20 years or whatever. Like 27. He, like he, 27. You know what I'm saying? On public television, um, it's 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 man, it's almost human inhumane at this point. And you know what? Will is hypnotized. Will is hypnotized, bro. Will can't even see it because when you come in the game simping, and this is the, this is the term we call simp. Will Smith is the poster boy for simp. Uh, when you come in the game simping. And you think that these type of things are right because she has trained you and manipulated you for all this time thinking that these are the right things for this man to endure. Bro, you are Will Smith. You are a king, my brother. We look up to you, my brother. You are fucking up your legacy dealing with this woman. Please, by all means, divorce her immediately and send her back to the luxury apartments in which she came. And she's going to have to goddamn get a set it off to going or whatever, because a lot of the movies that she's been doing ain't been doing well. She is living off your name. She is living off your money. And she is living off your fame and notoriety. And now she's using your name to drag you down to keep her goddamn name buzzing. Will Smith, by all means, brother, we beg of you. Real niggas around the world beg of you 
Leave her and go get you one of these fly young bitches. Huh. So, <laughs> Leech, I got to ask you, and this is as real as I can put it. Why? Like, what do you think the motivation is for this woman? J- Jada, she, she's rich. They don't need the money. They don't need the money. You don't need to write a memoir. You don't need to be out there telling your business and in the interim killing one of the most beloved men that's walking earth right now, Will Smith. She's killing well, him. What what, did you, what do you think her motivation is? I know exactly what the motivation is. It's the same motivation that Joe Smith's wife had. It's the same motivation that Kim Kardashian had. Clout is still Damn. the most Damn. addictive drug. The attention, they fiend for it. They will cross out. They will backstab anything for it. It's the same thing. They got Keefe D locked up. You know, it, 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 it's it got all these people crashing out doing stupid and idiotic things and, and defacing, you know, uh, monuments, monumental people. Clout. Well, all I got to do is talk shit about you and they, my pro- and these folks going to want to listen to me. And all I got to do is cross you out and now I'm on all the blogs or I'm on the, all the interviews and I'm, yeah, but you, but at the same time, baby, you just, you just, you just tore down a monumental man. You just tore down a legacy that would have stood the test of time. So if Will Smith never has a, a, a another huge movie, the last thing we hearing about him is you out here crying over Tupac or whatever on a goddamn podcast. And so it's just, man, it's just imperative, man. Like I said, you know, that clout is a terrible drug because you're right. She doesn't need the money because Will has it because she ain't, she ain't making nowhere near what Will's making. And so it, it's, it's just the fact of the matter is now what, what, what is it's, it's attention. She wants attention. She wants her next, her next August I seen or her next little boy toy or whatever that that she can't keep quiet, and it's 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 just sad because Will can't possibly understand what he's doing to his legacy. Real niggas in the world would never. Ain't no way in hell, woman, you about to live in this damn house that I done provided for this lifestyle and these and, and all these damn bills and lights that I done paid for, and you think you about to be fucking and sucking another nigga on the? I don't give a fuck if we separated or not. <laughs> but I pay the motherfucking bills and you fucking and sucking another nigga, let alone our son's homeboy. So you fucking on the kids? Hey, if you don't get your ass out of my goddamn house and go back to the apartments you came from, Queen, because it wouldn't happen here. And I pray, I pray, I pray you'll wake up. I, I asked you what was her motivation. What do you think his motivation is? Because this man, Will Smith is still Will Smith. He's beloved. This man is rich beyond belief. If Will Smith don't never have another box office success, he's good. He's still handsome. Will Smith can have any woman in the world. And on top of it, the cat's out the bag. Once upon a time, everybody wanted that Will and Jada love. That that that, that right there, that didn't age well. That saying, it did not age Ooh, well. At all. But, but, he's still sticking with her. Despite how many people because, because once upon a time, you didn't even want to talk bad about that couple. Really? You wanted to keep your opinion because they was black royalty. But everybody from top to bottom is like, my God, Will, you're being emasculated publicly. What What is his motivation for staying? And you I can't think, tell me I just love her. I think I think he is. He's scared of what she is going to do. Women can. What's the only way that a, that a, that you can inherit a powerful man from within inside? She's inside, bro. Will's a fist. Only way the motherfucker get through here is if, if one of these goddamn fingers open up. She's inside. So she, you know, the person, only person can stab you in the back is somebody standing behind you. Mm-hmm. So she got that knife at his back, and anytime she knows his, she knows his weaknesses. 
She knows his insecurities. She knows his dirty laundry. She knows his business. She knows, you know what I'm saying, um, that he got doo-doo streaks in his drawers. She know that, you know, he may not get his dick up. She'll go tell it all. And so a lot of times men will stay in a relationship or stay with a woman because it seems like it's easier than to get blackmailed. It seems like it's easier than to have to go through a, a nasty divorce where she's trying to take half of everything. Women are incentivized to leave us. So, fellas, y'all got to understand that. They're incentivized to leave us. If Will, if Will and Jada get a divorce, Jada is entitled to, if they didn't do a prenup, which I'm pretty sure they didn't, Jada is entitled to sure half, half of everything that Will worked for. Will, that bitch won't shoot with him in the gym. She did not save the world on Independence Day, my boy. She was not Muhammad Ali. She did not sell all these, these, these movies. No. We saw her and set it off, and then she started talking at a red table. And so, if you have all of these things, these accolades, this respect and things of that nature, and this woman at no any point in time can take it away from you, mm, you weigh your options. Deal with this bitch, lose half the bag. Deal with this bitch, lose half the bag. All right, bitch, you take your side of the wing. I'm going to take my side of the wing, and I, we just going to live like that. And so, I think it's the fact that Jada... Cause women, women are manipulative too. Don't, 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 don't let these women fool who you. They know niggas' social security numbers, account numbers. Know where their money at. Know where their money ain't. Know what they paid taxes. If they didn't, know what they did wrong. What they did illegal. What they did. Yeah, she's gonna go tell it all. She's gonna ruin him. Will is a prisoner by that woman. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it's some shit that she know that that boy don't want out. And it's work. And, and, and it's and it's so bad for him. That he's willing to stay with her so it don't come out. That's what it is. She's blackmailing that man. And so he got to sit there and smile and say, <laughs> I'm dropping a new Fresh Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> because it'll be Jada, Jada Pinkett's Bel Air by the time she get finished with him. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, she must got something on this dude because all things considered, It, it, it comes to a point where enough is just enough. enough it's got to be the money, man. It's got to be. It's got to be the you money. Know, when, 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 I mean, I'm a man just like you, a man. I can't be with no woman that tells the world that another man was her soul man. Like, like, how how can you lay next to this woman and know you always gonna be second best? Because her soul she, made she, ain't even here anymore. This is what's crazy though, bro. When he leaves, if he ever leaves her, he's going to be the bad guy. They're going to label him the bad guy. They're going to say, oh, he left her hanging or, oh, he was cheating or, oh, well, if Will was cheating and goddamn it, he cheated the right way because we ain't never heard about it. Ain't none of them hoes come on goddamn TMZ and goddamn have an interview with Angela Yee talking about the times that we will. We'll. So if he was cheating, ladies, because y'all like to say that shit, at least he cheated respectfully. Jada couldn't even keep her hoes in line. So they're still going to ridicule this man at the highest degree when he leaves her. And so he thinks about it. Man, I got to deal with this bitch taking half. Then I got to deal with these media and these goddamn shows and all these folks saying that I'm bad for leaving this cheat now. So what am I left with? Well, I could just goddamn stomach that shit and share her podcast when she say that bullshit and keep all my money and wait for that bitch to die. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you're going to see some good acting. God damn it. Will Smith going to Jada Pinkett's goddamn funeral. Them cheers he tried. That's going to be some good acting because that nigga going to be tears of joy. Hold on. So you, him going to her funeral. Well, Will going to win the Oscar. That's going to be his greatest performance yet. Tears of joy. Tears of joy. I finally got rid of this bitch. Yeah, he can't get rid of her, man. She ain't, she ain't going. She ain't going. You know what I'm saying, bro? Because you know, our early years in our lives, right? We used to have to pay to try to keep a girl. Oh, baby, please don't leave. You know, I get your nails done. Oh, baby, please don't leave. I pay the bills. Oh, baby, please don't leave me. 
Then you get to a certain level in life where you become affluent, you become financially stable. Then it switches. And you got to pay them hoes to leave. That's you got to pay them to leave. That's crazy. All your life, you just have to try to pay them to stay. Baby, please stay with me. I love you. As soon as you get a little money, you don't think them light bulb click? Oh, you want to get rid of me? And hey. so these women, these women play that game. They get with these affluent, powerful, wealthy men, and they like, okay, nigga, you're gonna have to pay me to leave. And Jada Pinkett Smith's price is probably a little too high or beyond comfort for Will. So he's like, nah, bitch, we just gonna stay here then, goddammit, and it is what it is. I pray, I pray, I pray, yeah. man. I pray he get away from him. I pray. Cause uh, it's an old saying, some money costs too much. That girl, Michael Damn. Jordan, uh, she Michael Jordan for dysfunction of black women, boy. She Michael Jordan. She is the GOAT, boy. She is the, the she is the GOAT of that shit, boy. She is toxic as fuck. She got future beat by 10, boy. Boy, and she, she, she public with it, like publicly making a mockery of this man. And this is one of the greatest actors, not black actors, greatest actors, period. One of the richest men, period. One of the most respected and revered individuals in the history of the world. And that's motherfucking West Philadelphia, born and raised. Born and raised. And you just, and you are just taking a chunk out of this man by chunk, by chunk, by chunk. And you have poisoned the, the minds of your daughters and your children too, because they are in accordance to your bullshit and your fuckery. See, Men, we may be physically stronger than women, but when it comes to certain things, women are way more, way more strong than we are. When it comes yeah. to, 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 to planning, <laughs> cause you gotta, in order to plot, you gotta plan, right? Or, or plan. Maybe they, they can't plot like a woman can plot. A, a woman will be laying right next to you in your bed, sucking, fucking, cooking and cleaning and the whole time plotting to stab you in the back and we'll smile and do it with a, with a smile and face. And so men, we, we, a lot of times, and I always say this, Sean, we love men love unconditionally. Women love conditionally. We love more pure than women do. I will say that. Why? Because I could be riding in my Bentley through McDonald's to get me a tea. And if that girl in that drive through window looked like something I like, that's right. She may have the option to one day date me. But I ask you the same question. Is there any way if I was Not in that McDonald's, if I was in that Not McDonald's, chance. there is no way in hell that this Not woman is going to get me and say, come on, get in the passenger seat and ride with me. I'm going to build you it up. It ain't a chance in hell. It ain't a chance on planet Earth. I and don't so, care if you look like, I don't know, the, 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 the freaking Zeus and, and, and all of the gods rolled into one. You ain't got a chance. And so that's why I said we when we love a woman, we love who she is. We love her essence. We love her, her being here. We love this woman. A lot of women love a man on the condition of he's a great protector. He's a great provider. He's he, he, he brings value to my life. He, he brings a leadership to my children. All the things that he brings to the table, that's what she loves and, in, and inadvertently loving the man. Baby, I love your ass because you was born. You was born and God made you. And you know what? He made you for me. And, you know, I don't give a shit if you bring a dime in this motherfucker or $10 million in this motherfucker. I'm still going to love you the same way. But, baby, that man that brought you $10 million last year, let his ass come in this bitch empty-handed this year. And see uh, how it does not make sense. And so, fellas, you know, we got we to gotta understand and play the game for what it is. Like, hey, yeah, she loves you. You are the man for her until you're not. And when you're not... 
Unfortunately, so real. it's not going to make sense for her. Okay. Um, damn. I could stay on these relationships all day. <laughs> like, real talk. I in trouble, I, man. I, I get in trouble with the relationship, like, but I didn't tell the truth. <laughs> no, no. I know your style, so I knew, I knew exactly what I was going to talk about today. <laughs> Please tell me that you heard, um, it just came out, I think, yesterday or the day before. Um, Adam 12. Him and his wife leaning a plug. Adam 22, yeah, yeah. Adam 22, there you go. Excuse me. I'm, I'm thinking of that old school show, Adam 12. But Adam 22. Yeah. Um, he let Jason Love in the bedroom, blew her back out. A lot of people criticized him for it. She was like, yo, she was in pain for three days because this dude was so big and so large. Her box was torn to shreds. It took her three days to be able to pee straight again. Now they're coming out with a reality TV show because that that tape did so well. She, they made a fortune off it. They up in the ante. They're doing a reality TV show for the love of Lena. Lena the plug. They got dudes who are going to be competing for the chance I to have that. a threesome with Adam 22 and his wife. Can you even make this stuff up? Is this dysfunction or is it just good business? I think for Adam, it's good business. Adam pimping. Adam is pimping his wife. And once again, Adam is doing what Joe Smith should have done. Damn, he there you go. Exactly what Joe Smith should have done. He should, hey, you want to go be a hoe? You're going to be a paid hoe. Let's go ahead and get this shit together. I'm going to hold the camera for your ass since you, because I can't stop you from being a hoe. I can't stop you from being a porn star. I can't stop you from wanting to do all that. Cool. We're going to go, we're going to go get you paid. And guess what? I'm going to take 90. You take your 10%, God it, because that's my cat. Adam, Adam 22 doing what Joe Smith should have done. Adam 22 doing what Will Smith should have done. Adam 22 is doing that, that, really the things that half of these guys that are wifing up these, you know, less than virtuous women are doing. Um, so to say that, I applaud them. At least you're getting a bag out of it. Joe Smith ain't get no bag out of it. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, Will Smith just got persecuted by it. Oh, nah, man. Hey, God damn it. If, if you going to want to, baby... If you want to be less than virtuous and, and you want to be a baby, go be a hoe. If you're going to be a slut, be a slut. But guess what? Bring that bag home. So, um, no question. yeah, Adam, Adam, um, Adam Pimpy, man. And, and you know, uh, it, it's a business move at the end of the day. But once again, he knew what he had when he got it. He's not trying to change her or take her out of her element. He found a way to incorporate himself in it. To make it profitable for him. So I don't knock him for it. Could I have done it? Fuck no. Fuck no. Not a cold day in hell. But could I have, could I have married a porn star? No. Probably not. Not going to be on my top things to do this, this lifetime. But if you are going to do those things, at least make the best of it. And instead of trying to change these women of what they are, find a way to capitalize and monetize. And so I I, I, I don't knock them. I know that um, that video, that first video she did with Jason Love did millions of m millions of dollars. Millions. One that records. This, this reality series is going to do millions of dollars in the video. When they finally do it, it's going to do millions of dollars. So, you know, you got some guys out here that's wives is getting fucked for, for $40 and a, and a shot of Hennessy. So, uh, at least you guys making millions of dollars let another guy hit his wife because there's tons of because you know Will Smith I guarantee didn't receive one red cent for August I've seen a land dick in Jada Pinky. Shouts out to Adam, he got to figure it out. He got to he got to figure it out. All right, I, I'm gonna leave that there. I mean, you, you I, I mean, I don't even have a comeback. But <laughs> he said, "I guarantee you, Will Smith." In this shit. I ain't received one shiny red cent for August Alcino. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. And I bet you right. It is a crazy thing. I'm, I'm almost in, in. 
I'm sure they'd never tell. But then again, knowing uh, Jada, she might tell. But Orchis was probably knocking that down in the Smith residence. Of like, course. Like it wasn't even like they was going to hit. I mean, of course. That, that nigga. How that do you disrespect did that? They get? She was friend. He was friends with her, her son. He coming over for Sunday dinner. He got some Sunday dessert. Yo, bitch. This nigga came over with spaghetti and pussy, what? <laughs> that boy got him some got spaghetti dinner. Then when every goddamn went off the shit, when everybody went to bed, he tiptoed his ass on Jada's side of the wing and laid down deep. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> Yo, but I'm gonna tell you, yo, Nietzsche, can you get any more disrespectful than that? And then Will is like, this is the happiest week of my life. I support my wife. What, like, maybe they just got something we don't understand. Maybe it's just that simple. Because I don't understand. Let's just call it she what it got, is. She got her claws, man. She got that She got that knife at that boy back, man. Boy, they look, look at her, bro. Look at when you when you see her on these on these shows and stuff. Look at her eyes, man. That woman is evil, bro. Look at her, bro. When she crying, <laughs> that bitch is diabolical, bro. She dangerous, bro. She got that knife at that boy back and say, nigga, if you even think about leaving me or saying anything, I am going to shove this shit. So far up your back that you will not recover. You'll be doing Tubi movies when I finish with you, nigga. <laughs> oh, God. She evil, dog. And you know what? This man, he just got to play the puppet because he's has so much to lose. Okay, that's what we got to realize as men, too. Bro, I, mean, but, but, I mean, haven't he lost enough? The man can't go to the Oscars for the next 10 years. I ain't seen a Will Smith headline movie since he slapped Chris Rock. She had him on 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 uh, Red Table Talk, talking about gave a new gave a new word to it entanglement. entanglement. This man, like, I haven't the man lost enough. What could she possibly have on this man? Will Smith will be doing Tubi movies by the time Jada Pinkett Smith finished fucking with him, bro. He will be at the top of the Tubi. Will Smith comes to Tubi. <laughs> Bro, you don't think that these women know exactly what 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 is your biggest care? See, you got to understand, women pay attention to us. We pay attention to the world and 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 getting the money. Women pay attention to the money we make. So they're going to pay. She's going to pay attention. She knows what his bread and butter is. She knows what's coming in. She knows where it's coming. And she knows how to cut his water off. In every spot. Oh, well, you won't have this Netflix. I'm going to cut that water off. Oh, you won't have this residual. In, you won't have this Fresh Prince money. You won't have. She, I, she'll cut off all the goddamn water. And then she'll take half of whatever was left over that she cut off. Because you think that, man, that woman is not going to let that boy divorce her and go on. And he going to pop out with something tough. He going to pop out with something crazy. No you question. That, that no question. Going for that. You know, he going to out, pop out with the best of the best. She's not about to do that because that's going to make her look bad. Because now she's going to be the old chick, the old has-been. She's going to be the old has-been chick. He ain't, he ain't about to let her pop out like that. So she got that knife at that boy back. Nigga, I, you'll be doing Tubi movies by the time I finish with you. Fuck with me if you want to. I'm going to sell my books. You're going to post my page. You're going to post my little shows. And you can go get your money and I will leave you be. And I'm gonna make my money off you, so I can go see, you know, the, the, the next. Yeah. Oh my God! All right. Um. Again, I, I could stay on this relationship thing all day. Yeah. Kiki Palmer. Oh my gosh, bro! Oh, shit. Kiki Palmer. <laughs> Kiki Palmer. She. She. Just filed, I think it was yesterday or today, just filed a restraining order against her ex-boyfriend now, Darius uh, Jackson. She um she applied for sole custody of their child. 
She put out pictures of Darius from, from their ring camera, still images of him choking her out in the crib, saying, I need to be saved from this man. Darius and his brothers come. Matter of fact, her mother came out, Kiki's mom. Like, yo, Darius been beating my daughter up for years and his brother knew about it. And all this start, and here's the crazy part, right? Before I throw it on over to you. All this started publicly. I can't say behind closed doors because she said this man been whipping her out for years. But publicly, because she went to an Usher concert, half-dressed, bodied up, showing her after baby body and got serenaded by Usher and her husband or her boyfriend it was like, yo, you a whole mom. How you out there looking like that getting serenaded by this dude? And it been downhill ever since. What's your thoughts on it? Well, once again, clout is, is in the picture. Uh, the last time with that Usher situation, what did Kiki Palmer do after she had, you know, totally humiliated her? Made baby a song dude? with him. Made a song. Made, Made a song. song. And a video. Double down on the disrespect. Double down on the disrespect. She, re she recorded the song, did the video with Usher, um, double down on the disrespect. And guess what? They applauded Kiki for it. Oh, Kiki, go, 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 girl. And the fact that the fact that this man wants his woman to act like a virtuous woman, acts like a mother, want her to act like, you know, as, as a woman should, he is shunned. He is ridiculed. He's insecure. Uh, he's trying to control her. And he's basically doing the same thing grandma would have told her to do. A lot of the things that men tell women to do, grandma told you to do the same thing. Grandma told you to keep your legs closed. Grandma told you not how you been this out there. Grandma told you to cover up. Grandma told you don't be sleeping around. Grandma told you all these things. But when a man says it, oh, he's insecure. Uh, he's controlling. He's a narcissist. You know, the same shit they always say. And so uh, I don't think he was wrong for because she publicly disrespected him. He wouldn't have had to go to Twitter to say anything about it if she didn't already publicly put this shit out there with a cheat out. You feel what I'm saying? And so when you hit a man with public disrespect, unfortunately, he can either, he can privately talk to you, but he's going to probably have to, you're going to force him to publicly reply. And so this situation is just the, the extended version of that. She's been disrespecting him. She's, um, She's been just violating him. That was a double down. Um, I don't exactly know why he, he 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 came back into the situation. But once again, as we said before, men love women unconditionally. So he probably really actually loves the, the this woman to death. He probably really loves this woman. He probably wants to have a family with a two-parent household for her kids and things of that nature. But unfortunately, that girl don't give a shit. She kiki palmer. You know what I'm saying? And I, if I can go get, if she can go get attention and validation from other men and other people, then why not? And on your, on, on my way out, I'm going to humiliate you more by exposing more of our family issues and our family business. Well, I'm going to go ahead and send you screenshots. And what the fuck is a goddamn movie star posting screenshots of the house for? Go! You trying to get another movie deal. You trying to be the next chick in Tyler Perry films. Or some abusive shit that paints a black man in the wrong. And, and unfortunately, man, these guys don't even understand it. They pawns in these women's schemes. He is a pawn, bro. She is, she is pawn. She is moving them across the chessboard. Now, do I, I definitely do never condemn a man ever physically putting his hands on a woman, assaulting his woman, unless he's defending himself. But of course, even if he was defending himself, she's never going to show that. She's going to show the part that he, he had her. She ain't going to show, women never show the part where they hit you in the head with the pot. They never show you the part where they hit you in the head with the pot, bro. They never show you the part where they pull the knife out on you. They never show the part where they pull the gun out on you. They only show the part where you try to get them away from you. Or you try. They never show the part where you try to leave and she stands, sits her fat ass right in front of the door and won't let you go. They never show that part. 
But as soon as. All right, man, go on now. Here come the phone. He beat me. Where are your bruises at, bitch? <laughs> what, show me the hospital records. Show me the black eyes. Show us the bruises. Right? Because if a man beating your ass and you really feel like you're scared of for your life, then where the fuck is the police report? Call the police on that nigga. No, y'all use that shit to try to control these niggas. These niggas don't be wanting y'all asses. So you're going to try to piss them off. You you woke that nigga up, hit him in the head with a pot. He tried to get the pot from you. <laughs> and you pulled the fucking phone out and said, this nigga beat my ass. And then you the Instagram. Why the fuck are you posting a, a domestic situation on Instagram when you should be sending that shit to the police? If the nigga hits you, call the police on his ass, get his ass locked up. And I believe the man that's beating on his woman should get his black ass locked up. So why the no fuck question. are you going to Instagram? Instagram ain't getting nobody locked up. You're trying to humiliate this man and use him for clout. That's why people go public. This whole exposure culture is for clout. Because if you really were a victim, the last place you're going is Instagram. You're going to the authorities. You're going to the hospital. Remember the girl that um got they said that um uh, the, the dude had hit her or whatever and had that big old big, her whole her face had swollen up or whatever the dude had hit her. Yeah, and it turns out to be some bullshit. Clout. Because if yeah. somebody is physically assaulting you, you feel scared for your life, the first thing you're going to do is not go to Instagram. You should go to the authorities. You should call an ambulance. You should call police there. You should call that if, you're, if your life is such in danger, if you were hurt so bad, if this man has physically hurt you so much, so why the fuck is everybody going live and not going to the damn hospital? Clout. So, Unfortunately, Tyler Perry probably going to cast him in the next film. <laughs> you know, it's going to be like Acrimony 2. And got <laughs> Kiki Palmer going to be the star. And, you know, and, and that's what it's, that's, that's how it's going to go. And she's going to use it to get another role. And Darius Jackson, as long as he allows her to, will be a pawn. And, and, and unfortunately, a child is involved. So now she knows she, she she understands probably she understands that that man wants to be in his child's life, as most of us do. Well, that but you know what that child is? That child is her main weapon. Oh, I got what you want. So you know what? I may not be able to keep you, but I got this child, and I'm gonna wave that shit around like a carrot in front of a donkey and make you do my bidding. And any time that you get wrong, I'm gonna snatch it away from you. I'm going to, there going, she is going to use that child as a goddamn, a, a, as a weapon. And so Darius and got himself in a situation, man. Um, Unfortunately, it's, 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 it's a lot of men all, all over the country because like I said, she's only showing her highlight reels. She ain't show the shit when she hit him in the goddamn head with a pot. She ain't show that. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, and and I'm gonna start off by saying, you know, and and I and I know I speak for you when I say this. Under no circumstances do um, we support, condone any any man putting his hand on a woman. Exactly. I, I, absolutely not. That's some weak ass shit. Yeah, but I don't think it was an accident. You know that she released steel shots, steel shots. From a video, and both of which had Darius choking her out. Uh, but if she was in an abusive relationship, I support her a million percent. I do. Me too. Me and too. unfortunate, especially as a, a black man, I understand, you know, what what it's like, the implications of having a child in a dysfunctional home, and now the child stands to be raised in a broken home. Mommy is not with daddy. So I hope and I pray for them, for both of their sake, that they could put their mess to the side and put the child at the forefront and, and, and move accordingly. Yeah. Because the, 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 the persons that's going to suffer, you know, and this is for better or for worse, right? Because just because mommy and daddy didn't work out, mommy and daddy is your biggest role models in life. And they're going to, whether this is a boy or girl, and I'm not sure what they got a boy or girl, 
But you are the ones who are showing that child how to either treat a woman or how to treat a man, how to behave in a relationship or how to be or how to, to continue this cycle. If you see daddy and mommy arguing all the time and you think that that's normal, when you get into a relationship, you're going to be arguing all the time because you think that this is what relationships are. But if you see that daddy and mommy work together, even though they're not together, mm -hmm. if you see daddy and mommy have my interests first, that is the way you're going to be in your relationship. So I hope for their sake, for their child's sake, they figure it out. Do, do, you, uh, you know, we, do we, we, we got to sit and realize that a lot of times women raise the exact men that they hate. Women say they hate weak oh. men. Right? I hate a weak man. I hate an old feminine, sensitive ass, paragraph typing ass nigga. You hate a weak man, but then you turn around and raise one. Because unfortunately, a woman cannot raise a boy to become a man. She can raise him to become an adult, but you can't, ma'am. There is not a black woman here in the world that can raise a boy to become a black man. You are not going to be able to teach him what he's what he's what he's what he's going to deal with as a black man. You're not going to teach you're not going to be able to teach him what to look out for. You're not going to be able to teach him how to problem solve shit. You're not going to be able to teach him. You're not you you cuz you've never faced those challenges in life. So you can cheat, you can you can you can raise him to be an adult, but you can't raise him to be a strong black man. And so what do you do? Well, you get pregnant because the guy's good enough for you to get pregnant and fuck raw, but he's not good enough to marry. You have the nigga kid and then you shun him and you disassociate with him and you make it extremely hard for this man to be in his child life. It's conditional. You can see your child if you bring this money in. You can see your child if you bring this PlayStation in. You can see your child if you buy food for all me and my other kids. Then you can see your child. And so in turn, you're actually raising the exact same man that you can't stand. You're raising a feminine, weak, sensitive-ass dude. And then you turn around and say, ain't no good men out here. Uh, nah, your first baby daddy was decent. He just might not have had enough money or whatever. And, you know, but if you would have stayed down and, and brought him more peace and pleasure rather than goddamn pain and anguish, he might have figured it out. Because guess what? He figured it out later on. He's 35 and he married now. You know what I'm saying? You hate the bitch because, you know, because she because she stayed in the big house or whatever. But, you know, it is what it is. And so, you know, I just think that we are stronger together as men and women. And I wish that our our ladies could see that. See, I don't discredit what a woman brings to a man. I don't discredit what there are things that women can do that we just aren't good at. They bring value. Right. But I right. will not sit here as a man and let a woman discredit what the fuck I bring to this table. Baby, I built the damn table. Now, I understand you cook this food on this table and this shit is amazing. But baby, I built this motherfucking table. I bought this motherfucking house that this table sits in and I paid for this food that you cooked to f and the oven and the damn seasoning that you seasoned up for you to be able to serve this table. And you're not going to overlook that just because you can make a turkey, bitch. Not going for it, brother. And so I just want, and that's what my platform has always been designed. I want us to work together. How can we find, hey, what are you good at? What am I good at? How can we bring this together and work together? But at the end of the day, you have to appreciate and respect what men bring to the table as well as we respect what you, what you guys bring to the table. And that's where I think there's a lot of disconnect in the dating market. I couldn't agree more. I could not agree more. I couldn't agree more. All I right. just, um... Well, I just said a little tougher, you know what I'm saying? Because the baby daddy said it nice. The daddy said it nice. Every man in in their in their life said it nice to him, and they ain't want to listen to it. So Nietzsche gonna push the button, drop the bomb, and tell your ass like it is. Let me tell you real. I ain't gonna sugarcoat that shit. <laughs> oh man! All right, um, yo, let me stay in Atlanta for a second. Yes, sir. Young Thug, YSL Rico. Free Jeff. That trial is about to begin on the 27th. Uh, young Thug, he, I, I think it's five of them that's remaining that didn't cop please. 
judge just ruled, and let me get this right, judge just ruled that he's going to admit 17 sets of lyrics that the prosecutors can use as evidence against Young Thug and his five remaining co-defendants. This is a trial that's been lingering on for a year and a half now. They finally got a jury. It's finally ready to go to trial. And these lyrics are going to be used against this man. How do you think that this trial is going to play out? Uh, this is hard to talk about because I'm kind of close to it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, being here in Atlanta, working with YSL as much as I've worked with them. I mean, YSL and Free Bands was like next door neighbors. Um, you know, doing tours, doing those same independent tours with YSL. I actually toured with Yat Gotti, took him around, you know what I'm saying? And actually knowing, you know, Gunna and all these people, uh, it's, it's difficult to address because you know the actual people that are playing a part in it. Um, but I will say this. I think that the trial will eventually end up being a mistrial. And I'm going to say why. The prosecution has been moving extremely messy. They're like, you know how g girls call guys thirsty? And they so thirsty yep. to get the cat. They so thirsty to get them. They do thirsty shit and, and lame shit and, and just extra shit to try to get this girl. The prosecution thirsty. They thirsty for a conviction. So they're going to do weird things like have 700 witnesses with no new evidence presented or whatever to piss the judge off like he was just talking about last week. They're going to do weird things like maybe set plants. We'll see if people are going to walk up to Young Thug and give him a, 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 some drugs to see if he's going to take it. They're doing weird shit. Um, and eventually, I think that judge is going to get tired of that because at the end of the day, at this point, it's about. All they really, if, if they had something so definite on Thug, then why the hell is it taking two years for y'all to come out with it? Why did y'all have to arrest almost a hundred, with a hundred some odd people to let them go free on a plea? They literally let them walk out to jail. Just to say, oh yeah, yeah, well if you say this, we'll let you walk out to jail. So you don't arrest a hundred people and let all but five go walk out to jail for free. So basically, you're going with a he say, she say, and now you want to bring the lyrics into play. Y'all ain't got shit. Y'all ain't had shit from the get-go. Y'all ain't got nothing on that boy. He would have been trying to start that trial. Y'all would have tried to push that bitch out and get his ass locked. No, nah, but they, they stalling. You're trying, to, you're trying to fish, and ain't nobody cracking. You're trying to get that star witness, and ain't nobody cracking. You feel what I'm saying? And so... It's a situation where I don't think they have much, and I think that it's 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 quite frankly a shit show, and they gonna mess around, and they gonna lose it all in a mistrial because they gonna do some weird shit. They gonna do some un because they want them bad. You gotta understand people's careers on the line. If they convict this guy, um, you know some of these motherfuckers can run for president. Fannie yeah, Willis. Yeah is a nation national name national the whole world knows who she is and that's one tough lady and i don't want no parts and i ain't got nothing bad to say about fanny willis and i want to come over here and fuck with me fanny i ain't got no problem with you but god damn it um <laughs> who but at the end of the day you got to understand that a lot of these people are puppets and it's it's somebody up top that's pulling the strings feel what i'm saying and they sending they sending people that look like us they sending us to go get us. So they they, they put a battery in that woman back and say, hey, go do my bidding. And you go take them down. And guess what we're gonna do after we take you after you take them down? I will give you a promotion. It's the same way that Master did on the plantation when goddamn Sambo wanted to tell on all the slaves that was, oh, goddamn Jeffro bought the goddamn, he bought the goddamn run. And the master throw his ass a chicken, like, thank you, Sambo. You told me they go whip Jeffro, whip his ass and whip him good. And, and every time somebody ready to escape the plantation, here comes Sambo ass telling master what's going on for that damn chicken. They just throwing that, they throwing half them folks chickens, dog. 
to goddamn slime out the half the goddamn city, man. I mean, and it's it's sad, you know what I mean? But like I say, if they really had something, they would have been, they would have been trying to get this thing started. It took these folks almost a year to get a jury. Because not yeah, everybody yeah. knows this is some bullshit, man. And that's all I can say. <laughs> off, off, on the record. <laughs> now, offline, we can have a conversation. <laughs> Nah, I mean, I, I spoke to an attorney down there, and he was like, yo, this this trial is a mess. He said, this trial is a mess. Don't think from a legal standpoint that it's as buttoned up as they making it seem. He was like, they right now, they're in, they're in deep, so they got to go through with it. But the bottom line is, it's a mess. So, you know, we see how this thing play out. Uh, before I let you up out of here, I want to get your thoughts on we 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 in uh you know this this is a highly political season that we're in. Uh, next year it's it's the presidential. Oh hell, you about to give me yeah. a trouble again? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. No, I, I saved the best for last because I really want to hear your thoughts on I said it. everything I said. Fuck it. Nah, you know, Trump leading in all the polls as pertains to running against Biden. Um, they are throwing everything at this man but the kitchen sink. Nothing seems to stick. His popularity is, you know, it, it, it's as big and as, as impactful as it's ever been. Um, all of the polls show in five... It, five of, of the key swing, swing states that he would beat Joe Biden. But something interesting is happening that I want to pick your brain on. More and more people of color are coming out in support of Trump this go round. Once upon a time, it was beyond taboo to say I support this man. He was looked at as a racist. He was looked at as somebody who didn't care about black people. The same person who went on TV uh, years ago, 2008, I believe, and said George Bush don't care about black people, Kanye West, happily, boldly, wearing a MAGA hat. Kodak Black went on Drink Champs and said, I give Trump a million dollars. He got me out of jail. Sexy Red said, yo, black people, we support Trump. How do you think this race is going to turn out? And why do you think so many people of color are now standing up for a man who four years ago wouldn't touch him? So. <sighs> going to get in trouble. Fuck it. All right. So. um, Trump called us nigger to our face. Biden calls us a nigger behind closed doors. They both calling us a nigger. Trump going to say it to your face. Biden might say it behind your back. So now we're dealing with two people that think of us the same way. It's the lesser of two evils. Well, the gas is higher now than it was in 2020. Uh, the economy is way down versus what it was in 2020. The streets is dried the fuck up right now compared to what it was when Trump was in office. See, what Trump did was, I believe, tr Trump used strategy. What first and foremost, he ran a company like a business, which is which may not be a bad thing. But he he used strategy when he was running when he was running against Hillary. He knew that black people didn't like Hillary. A lot. So we wasn't going to vote for her ass anyway. So if I'm being strategic, I don't need to put a lot of my time and energy and effort in the, the black vote because they're not going to go vote for that bitch anyway. I'm going to go get them racist, middle America, white America, southern people that had a black president for the last eight years that's mad as fuck about that shit, and I'm going to ride their ass up because I know they're going to go to, they're going to run to the polls for me. 
because the niggas won't go in anyway because they won't go vote for Hillary in the first place. You know what I'm saying? She was weak to black women because she let a man goddamn get his dick sucked in the over office and ain't going to well. And quite frankly, we know the bitch be lying and shit. So he didn't have to worry about Hillary. So why does he have to worry about the black vote? Because of the fact that we weren't going to go vote for her. So he go get all Jeff Rhodes, all the goddamn, all, you know, the, 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 the rednecks. They love him. And so now we've had a chance and opportunity to see four years of Trump of what the economy looked like or what them SBA loans and them PPPs and them stipends and them and them free bands look like. And now we've had four years to see what Biden looked like. Well, the economy is shit right now. The streets are dried up. Nobody has money. God damn it. The uh, inflation is ridiculous. It, a, a freaking carton of eggs is sky high. Gas is sky high. The, uh, the cost of living is ridiculous. You can't, you can't even literally live on the wages that are going on. And everybody remember, well, when's the last time I had money? God damn, when Trump sent them damn PPPs and them SBAs and them one, two, threes and them, you know what I mean? And so you weigh them. They both calling us nigga. They both don't really give a fuck about us. Trump's serving steak. Biden serving bologna. I'm gonna go eat me a steak dinner. Either way, I'm going to be called nigga. I'm going to eat some nigga steak instead of a nigga bologna sandwich. I think Trump going to win by land. But, but it don't, so it don't surprise you at all that black folk, black folk are openly saying I'm going to vote for Trump. Nah. I, 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 it don't surprise you. It doesn't surprise me because of the fact of the matter is that if we look at their bodies of work in the last four years, if I looked at my bank account in 2020 or 2019, I look at my bank account now, I'm going with Trump. It looked better then. My expenses to profit ratio was better. My you know, my gas prices was down. My rent was down. It, it, it looked better. And that's not to say that I'm a Trump supporter. No, it's the lesser of two evils. They both gonna fuck you, dog. One of them gonna fuck you with some Vaseline. Which one you going with? You go with the Vaseline, nigga. All right, cool. You feel what I'm saying? And so, um, and you got. But we also got to understand this: before Trump became president, black people loved him. When he was on the yeah, TV, yeah, you know, yeah. we loved him. Niggas used to put Trump yeah. in their song, bro. I'm rich like Trump. We yeah, all, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It was it was documented. Niggas would, niggas, Trump was hood. Nigga, Trump would be in the fucking goddamn parties, kicking shit, drinking liquor, fucking bitches. He was a gangster. You know what I'm saying? So when he became in office, he also, he a player. He a pimp. Hey. I don't got to worry about them right now because these folk going to be good because they don't like Hillary ass. So I'm going to go get these motherfucking redneck niggas they going to get me my ass in office. Then I'm going to throw these niggas some steaks. Which he did. He threw us some steaks, bro. Biden threw us goddamn baloney. We starving. So, you know, at the end of the day, like, hey, one, one nigga going to call you. He going to call you nigga in your face. Hey, bro, I don't like y'all. I don't give a shit what y'all got going on. The other one, he gonna smile. Oh yeah, we'll do everything for you. We don't give a fuck what they got going on behind closed doors. So that's why you got a lot of black people that's um that's starting to you know rock with Trump or whatever. Um, am I supportive of either one? No, not exactly. It's a lesser of two evils. But that's every presidential election. The last president that we were really, really like emotionally attached to was was Obama, bro. And, and to be totally honest, if you really want to be real, he really didn't do a lot for us. But it, it was the it was the beacon of hope. Bro, I cried when Obama got elected. I remember I was in the military. I cried when Obama got elected. Because I felt like, man, a brother can do that. I can do anything I fucking put my mind to then. If a nigga can run this country, nigga, I know I can become rich. I know I can become wealthy. I know that I can achieve generational wealth. I believed in the American dream by seeing a black man up there on that damn podium. But since then, 
Yeah. Trump, Biden, Hillary. I don't even know who ran against Biden last. Was it Trump? Yeah, Trump. You know what I'm saying? Like, eh. Mm, whatever. Who giving us more money? All right, Trump. All right, we'll it's that simple. What else is what else is Biden the counter? Biden's counter offer ain't shit. Biden's counter offer is high gas prices, overinflation, motherfucker, uh, uh, no, 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 higher taxes. You gotta understand, we done ran up all this money with Trump. A lot of people is in bro, COVID for a hustler, COVID was was a dream. COVID changed people's lives. COVID was the was a start of a lot of black entrepreneurship when niggas was sitting in them damn houses for the months they had to figure some other shit out and they couldn't depend on going to that nine to five niggas creative juice started going oh shit i'm about to start so real that is what? so real oh yes sir oh yes sir we are if you were hustling you came up with COVID. if you if you were hustling you remember COVID as a good thing like nigga that's when i got my money together so now a lot of us in hindsight, are in different tax brackets than we were. Because before COVID, we were all, most of us were employees. Now, a lot of us are business owners. So now we're in different tax brackets. And here come goddamn Biden, goddamn, want more taxes? No. So, you know, you got to think about it. Like, and, and I hate to say it, Republicans, they look out a little more. Than the Democrats do when it comes to getting when you when you're a business owner, at least from what I've what I've you know what I'm saying I'm not a but from what I've seen like ah well I get some tax breaks going fuck with these folk over here and you got to admit I'm a veteran as well so I've been in the military Republicans always look out for the veterans more than Democrats do so yeah, stereotypically yeah, yeah. I should be a full blown black Republican I can't let myself be that and you know because of just of what it re- entitles, but they both calling us nigga. We'll go with the best deal. I'm going to tell you, my brother, I enjoyed this time with you. Uh, we definitely got to make this a yeah. regular thing. Yo, yeah. Nietzsche, <laughs> you go, I'm going to keep it so real. On one hand, you had me dying. <laughs> but on the other hand, you were so damn thought-provoking and you speak so much truth and you put it in a way that is so palatable and digestible to just the average man. I love this conversation, brother, and we definitely going to do it again. We going to end this thing here, but I appreciate you. I thank you for coming on and I look forward to the next time, bro. Oh, love, love and respect, my boy. Salute. Man, my brother. Salute. Salute. Anytime. It's that ugly money. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.